Hi everyone and welcome to a new podcast, Shades of Black. I am your co-host, Negalan, the founder of Consciously Black, a community platform where I gather Black individuals in Canada to discuss their Black experiences and revive Black pride. And I'm Miriam, a registered psychotherapist and founder of Thoughtful Therapist, a mental health platform aimed to empower marginalized communities. And together we have created Shades of Black a bi-weekly podcast emerging from both our studies where we shed light on the different experiences encountered within our Black communities and the mental health aspects that exist within those experiences. Join our new community space where we discuss our challenges, our successes, our joy, our pain, and our Blackness. Follow us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other platforms to tune in into our bi-weekly episodes. We cannot wait to converse with you. All right. So hi, everyone. Welcome to our first episode. Um, we'll, today we'll be discussing labels associated with African diaspora. What's the definition of diaspora, African, um, African diaspora, Afro-Canadian, um, etc. Mm-hmm. Based on the Miriam Webster defi- uh, Dictionary, um, it defines as the Jews living outside from Palestine and the modern Israel. And the second definition is the people settle from, uh, people settle far far from their ancestral homelands. And the term diaspora came from the ancient Greek word of meaning to scatter about. And that's exactly what the people of the diaspora do. Um, They scatter from their homeland to place across the globe, spreading their, their culture as they go. Um, and for example, Miriam and I are both uh, are both um, Haitian diaspora, and our homeland is Haiti, and we're currently living in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, for the next definition is what is African. So again, going at the Collins Dictionary instead of the Merriam-Webster, um, I was able to find three definitions. So the first one is of African means that belonging or relating to the continent of Africa or its countries or people. And then the second definition says belonging or relating to black people who come from Africa. And then the third definition is used to describe someone, usually a black person who comes from Africa. So in that third definition, they really specify that it's a black person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the third definition will go back to Nero. Um, Which is, um, what is the African diaspora. And based on Oxford University Press, the African diaspora is the voluntary and involuntary movement of African and their descendants to various parts of the world. Um, So African diaspora is a term commonly used to describe the mass of dispersion of people from Africa during the um, transatlantic uh, slave trades. Um, where millions of people from the Western and Central Africa was scattered to different regions throughout North America, the Caribbean, and South America. Mm -hmm. Um, And based on Miriam Webster, it defined the Afro-Caribbean as a person of African descent born or living in a Caribbean nation. And the top five countries with the largest African diaspora population in the Caribbean and South, um, and South America are Brazil um, with uh, 55.9 million, United States with 46.4 million, Haiti, um, which is with 10.1 million, um, Dominican Republic, 9.2, and Colombia with 4.9. Shout out to Haiti for being top three. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Haiti has over, uh, Haiti, technically it's 95% of nations, that's okay, African, yeah. basically. That's African. That's yeah. African, yeah. That sense, yeah. Okay. And so for the fourth definition, I think we're on four, which would be what does it mean to be black? And so for this one, I really went into finding an article. Um, I'll put the link the link in the description. Yeah, of the bio. Bio. yeah. <laughs> So basically, the, what the article did is outline the diversity within African population, and it discussed um, the strength and the limitations uh, to the term black and the labels that are related to blackness. So in this article, they really define blackness as um, a person with African 
ancestral her- origins, yeah. And then, and it's often used in a more of a political and the power struggles or within a social context. So um, to kind of describe, I guess, a larger group of people rather than going specifically within the ethnicities or the cultures yeah. or whatever. <laughs> um, and so, um, yeah, so the term black really has a psychosocial and political significance to it. and it's actually seen as unuseful and unhelpful when we're trying to, um, I guess, speak of a population or speak within our black community or about our black communities because it, um, it converts like a wide range of ethnic and cultural backgrounds within one little spot, right? And so it takes a diversity only puts it into one. And then that really just, um, can negate or take away the actual importance of the culture and the heritage that come from specifically uh, denouncing or speaking of a specific uh, population or African yeah. population. So, yeah, and what it does is really just reinforce stereotypes if we're only using black, black rather than actually specifically tailoring to specific population. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> And so um, for the other conversation, well, conversation, but topic, we wanted to address also what it means to be African-Canadian, seeing that we're in the Canadian context. And um, I feel like oftentimes Afro-Canadians or African-Canadians are often left out of the conversation due to a lack of knowledge or whatever the case might be. So in the Merriam-Webster definition of African-Canadian, they specifically say a Canadian of African and especially black African descent. So again, we can see the term black specifically relaying to the skin color. Yeah. And then in the Canadian encyclo- en- encyclopedia, I can't say that word. I know, Cana- we're French, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Canadian encyc- encyclopedia. <laughs> okay, <laughs> désolé. <laughs> black Canadian means... Uh, black Canadian and African Canadian are people of African or Caribbean ancestry who live in Canada. So it's interesting how in this definition they kind of separated African and Caribbean people within yeah. the context of being black Canadian. But yeah. 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 That was my thought. And I feel <laughs> like that in another episode we'll go a bit more in depth about like um, the African Canadian that's. Uh, um, that have been here um, for centuries, for centuries. Yeah. Um, slavery, and they, they were moving from the South America to all the way to the North. Mm-hmm. Um, so from another episode, we'll get a chance to kind of dive in a bit more into detail. Mm-hmm. Um, but for right now, this is the definition that those are the definition kind of help you to see that there's just that one word block can mean so many, so different, many different things. things yeah. So within my blackness, um, I often, when I tell people, like when I meet people, I tell them I'm Haitian Canadian. Well, it depends. Yeah. So I'll either say like I'm Haitian, yeah. right? But that's often if I'm just speaking to another black person. And if I'm speaking to uh, another person who might not be black or just not racialized, yeah. then I'll most likely say that I'm Haitian Canadian. So I'll add that Canadian aspect so that they can know that I'm born and raised here and that I have as much rights as they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. Because for me, I say the same thing. Like, yeah. if someone asks me when I'm from, like, I'm first generation, I'm here in Canada. So automatically, my head is like, okay, I'm Haitian, mm-hmm. you know? However, like, I don't know, like, I feel like when I apply to a job and someone's like, oh, like, where you know, you like, from? where are you from? <laughs> What do you mean where I'm from? I'm yeah. Canadian, yeah, okay. you know? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, but, um, yes, like, I feel like for me, it's like depends of who I'm like speaking with. Yeah. Um, but how does it like, how do you feel about being called an Afro Canadian? Since we're like, based on the definition, mm-hmm. we are technically Af- mm-hmm. like African descent. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't mind claiming the word African within my identity because I know that without that root or that identity Haitian culture wouldn't really be what it is you know what I mean so Haitian culture is based off of African culture a lot of the times when then within the mixtures of whatever came about afterwards so I recognize the African but I don't think I personally claim it 
yeah. within when I walk around and telling people I'm African Canadian. I, I just don't feel like that's an identity that I can hold. Yeah. But I can go and tell people I'm Haitian Canadian, but that I do acknowledge my roots within the continent of Africa. Yeah, t- like I totally agree because if someone would have asked me if I know anything about like uh, the motherland, I would say no because I, I mean, I am oh, no. hoping that soon I can you know go around and visit and but so far I've never been to Africa mm-hmm. it's a place that I really I don't know I don't know which first country I, I will go but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start but um, so I guess that if someone will refer start referring me as an African Canadian I don't know how to actually um, hold space uh, hold, for yeah because I don't know if this label is the right label for me mm-hmm. um, just because that I was born in Haiti I grew up in Haiti um, and anything related to the African roots like it's already there in my culture but mm-hmm. even in Haiti it's not a conversation that we have and we go around and we're like oh we're African here oh, um, at yeah <laughs> but then again because like I feel like as a person that's just educated, I just understand that, and I don't find inv- I don't find it offensive to be um, called or labeled as African, mm-hmm. which a lot of some Caribbean people do. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, I guess that's my answer. Yeah. <laughs> do we want to talk about those who don't accept that label, or is that for another time? I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think I think we should. I think that goes into like the next topic where we talk more about the labels and the power that that holds and the idea of like what do labels actually do for us and yeah. why were they even like why like why are they even a thing? Yeah, you know what I mean. So, do you want to start with how you see labels and what you kind of convey them as? Label conveys like just a powerful meaning. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like label, it's the main thing with label, it's meant to divide us, Mm -hmm. um, just to all, but it also help our brain to kind of know what is what, Mm -hmm. but when it comes to, um, the debate over like the correct uh, connotation of name, um, has always been like a very dominant topic of conversation in the black community. Um, and I mean, those are conversations we see most of the time in United States because um, we can see like them going to like Negro, people of color, um, black, African American, and based on the, the last article you did mention that you know black doesn't really convey like anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> so that's mm-hmm. the reason why that I guess African American still remain like a very like um, common term to you mm-hmm. to to call anyone that have a darker pigmentation mm-hmm. um but i do feel that in canada like they automatically see you as black mm-hmm. or they ask you like where are you from mm-hmm. and because they're expecting you to actually not being born here mm-hmm. but again i guess to answer the question because of those label it comes it has such a bad and negative message behind sorry i shouldn't say bad and negative like i feel like the non-black people had labeled black and labeled us as barbaric and anything that's you know bad mm-hmm. and you know all the stereotypes that come with those labels so i think that was the main that was their plan when yeah. they labeled us. Yeah. So I do feel that African, that putting African in front of a terminology should be the, the right connotation mm-hmm. just because to kind of regain our identity. Mm-hmm. But as, Car- as a Caribbean um, person, I feel like saying Caribbean, Can- I'm, I don't know, like I'm Haitian, Canadian, mm-hmm. um, it's also a way to be proud of your roots and not yeah. be labeled into only black. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're kind of just going more specifically in the specific thing that makes you Haitian and taking pride into that. Yeah. In that aspect of the culture. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Um, so yeah, kind of like how you already mentioned it, like the whole purpose of labels is really for social identification right so the idea of that if i'm able to categorize you or identify you within a specific i don't know place or thing or you know what i mean yeah then i have a better understanding of how i'm going to i don't know navigate my relationship with you or you know like it just influences so i don't know if it's like 
a thing that we do because it's a natural process of our brain to categorize things or if it ended up developing into something that we do as like a survival mechanism as well to know like okay like if I know that you're also Haitian then I can feel a bit more comfortable in knowing that you'll know we have more of a similar experience yeah. right than somebody who might be from Nigeria right so 100. there's that comfort of yes you're black but yeah. there's also that difference in experiences and I don't know religion and things like that that kind of make it I don't know I don't want to say it's like harder for me to have like a conversation with that person but I think it just it dictates how I'm going to pursue this relationship yeah 100 percent yeah I think that's a very negative thing like negative effect mm-hmm. um aspect of uh, having Labels, a label yeah. and especially to be labeled as um a black person yeah but it all depends on like i guess how you label yourself and how like society chooses to label you Facts. right so like if you don't see yourself in the positive light when you see blackness right or you hear blackness or, you t- or people tell you that you're black then you're gonna end up moving in that certain manner right where you're not going to really like yourself you're going to have a lot of internalized racism you're going to project that onto your other relationships and so that can have a really negative impact on how you view yourself right and how you choose to move forward and things like that but then if you choose to i'm not sure what the word is if you choose to create your own identity right and define what blackness looks for you and what that means like for you then it'll be easier for you to not just maneuver through life but whatever challenges come and whatever people try to tell you within your blackness you're like okay well that might be true or that might have been true or that might be the narrative but I know myself enough to know that that's not true for me so I can reject whatever it is that you're you're saying yeah and I could just continue living my best life yeah I totally within ag- my blackness <laughs> honestly yeah. I, I, I i totally agree there's yeah. a there's even another thing that you know like when you're like you're very educated and you speak a certain type of way and mm-hmm. people are like starts to say like you're not black enough yeah. you know what does it actually mean to be black you know what i mean like it's whatever you make it exactly yeah. so even that and i guess that's kind of what i was trying to say by like stereotype and like in a I guess you know some people the moment they see you by default they kind of expect you to either act a certain way Mm -hmm. dress a certain way you know the social part Mm -hmm. aspect of the definition but you know I I agree because I don't feel that this label has been affecting my life I mean I can definitely share a few um experiences where I definitely felt that um my skin color was an issue Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um you know because I experienced most people kind of experience mm-hmm. racism as well, but I, for me, um, I don't ever. I never felt that that was. Um, I was a victim of my skin okay. tone. Interesting. Yeah, I guess a different experience for me, like being second generation and like growing up. My elementary school was like all white. You know, oh. so like <laughs> everybody said, or like my mom used to always say, like I was the coffee within the milk. You oh, know, or it's just yeah, things yeah. like that. And so. Um, It was interesting trying to be black in those spaces because a lot of the times, like, I would use terms in French, but that were also, like, Creole. You know when, like, words are very similar? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind (laughs) of just like you just apply it in French because you think it makes sense. And then when you say it, and a white person is just like, okay, but what are you saying? Like, that's not a word. I'm like, yeah, it is a word. It is a word. And it's just like, no, it's not. And it's not a word to you, but it's It's a word word for me. me, So it's a word. So it's a word, exactly. But then... (laughs) getting that reaction of like oh okay like i can't say things that have to do with my culture in front of these people right so it kind of brings a bit of shame when you're a kid and there's like okay like i can't actually like outwardly promote or show too much of my culture because i don't know somebody next door might say something like yeah. oh what is she doing you know just Little things like having my my ziris and then you know, you know people just judging your food at school. Like there's a, there's a thing yeah. where like I used to cover my food in high school okay. when I would eat because I would be scared it's, people. You know what yeah. I mean? So having those experiences where I couldn't actually like just be black and eat my food in peace. My first ex- I came here age of six, so my first experience the first time I realized I was black was mm-hmm. when I migrated in Canada mm-hmm. to come in Canada where I became a minority it was mm-hmm. a culture shock mm-hmm. for me because mm-hmm. this is when I'm like okay I am different 
and I never necessarily thought that my blackness was wrong, mm -hmm. but when racism came about and people were just starting to like say all the nasty things to me, this is kind of, I, at first I was just like, why are they saying all the nasty things to me? Like, you know, like, what do you mean? And then eventually I just kind of realized that it was all because yeah. of my skin tone. Yeah. But yeah. It's interesting having those realizations when you're a kid because yeah. it just doesn't make sense because for you, you're just, you just are who you are, right? And then somebody makes or realizes that you are who you are because you're black. And then they highlight the blackness and the blackness was never really seen, something you had seen or ex like seen as negative or whatever yeah. in your life. And then now you're kind of faced with this realization of like, okay, like I can't just be, you know, like something about my skin shows that I'm other. And people yeah. aren't able to kind of see me without seeing my skin first. So I guess my question to you is like, what do you think that's like, why certain certain people just absolutely don't want to have certain label certain, certain labels. Certain um, labels. I guess it goes back to the netiquette, negative connotations that would have been added to whatever label they wouldn't want to be attributed to, right? So, if a Caribbean person doesn't want to be called African, right, then it's about looking at okay, well, what has been said about Africans, and why does this person not want to identify with what has been said, right? And obviously nobody wants to be identified as barbaric or whatever, right? Yeah. But if that's the common denominator, then people are just gonna wanna stay away or as far away from that. And I think that's probably like, you know, one of those tactics used during colonialism, slavery, um, to really just divide and conquer, like we mentioned earlier. Yeah. But also just to, I don't know, create more, like the division that's created within us, right, allows us to fight more within each other. And yeah. then that internalized racism that, like, I don't know, we're just never really able to get back to our roots. And I think that's probably part of it. I feel like there's always like something that, <laughs> I don't know, these people back then knew about us that we don't know about us or we didn't know, or we probably knew was powerful about us, Yeah. but they saw it as a threat and they've tried to find a way to take that away from us yeah. and it's it's worked and i, I it's, it's funny that you're saying this because i kind of saw an article that was saying that um i feel like one of the the best thing that they have done is to divide us mm -hmm. in a sense like not for good for us but for them mm -hmm. um because the moment that every the, the moment of all of us we kind of like all realize that we come from like the same like the same ori origin we do share we have so much more in common mm -hmm. um i think that is, this is where the power come mm -hmm. um so so far we has just we just been divided like yeah. it's just division that just kind of exists um yeah. within us yeah and i think like there's also um what's it called a concept named or called like the willie, willie lynch theory i don't know if you know about it so it's not very known, but it's actually very a very powerful concept that was applied during slavery in the Caribbean. So I forget his name. Some slave master, he was able to, um, I don't know, he had different colonies within the Caribbean. I think mostly like Haiti and Jamaica. And then they were able to find tactics that work to divide us, but to keep us working as well. So he was able to bring that tactic in the States because in the yeah, States, okay, yeah, when yeah. they were able, in the States, they, they were just constantly lynching black people. If you, yeah. weren't, if you weren't performing properly, you would get lynched. So then this guy came from the Caribbean, he was just like, you guys are wasting bodies, right? You're wasting bodies by just choosing to kill them rather than trying to find like actual like mental ways and intellectual ways to get them to keep working and hate themselves within their population. I, so he just brought that tactic into the states and then that's why you know now we have colorism so it's like putting the black the light skins over the dark yeah. skins you have the black people who are in the field you have the light skins who are in the house you have the putting the young people against the older people so yeah. now there's a division between the wisdom that we have from our elders and the youth or the generation that is upcoming so there's that division there there's also that division within what was it like women and men, right? right? So stripping the men away from the families, having the women specifically take care of their, their child, but also relying on the masters 
to take care of their children as well. So there's the, when you start to go a bit more in yeah. description, I kind of remember. Yeah. So the name of the book is The Willie Lynch Letter and Making of a Slave. Yes. And it's by Willie Lynch. And I, yeah. I read it. Um, yeah. It's also on, uh, I feel like it's in all platform. It's a yeah. very, very you small f- book. You could find it on, you, you could find snippets on YouTube. Oh, no, if you YouTube. just, YouTube, we'll put the link in the yeah. info, But So I, it's, because I forgot, I forgot his name, yeah. but when you start to go more in detail, I'm like, oh my sense. God, I remember, yeah. like, I, I read this book. Um, and it's crazy. Yeah. It's honestly crazy because, I mean, for another conversation, by following us we get to kind of diving a bit more into like you know harder conversation like you said like um yeah harder conversation like the separation of them like they knew what they were doing Mm -hmm. right and until today um all the problem that we having in the black community all the stereotype that we have it was all planned yeah and, and it all stems from that one. That one. Yeah. And that one tactic, he's pr- he, I think within the letter, he precisely says, like, this is something that you need to apply now, and it'll affect generations. In generation, yeah. Three, like, 300 years later. And how long has it been? And we're uh, in the same cycle. So same. when, like, when we, I think, like, when I really learned that piece, willing more about the Willie Lynch theory, is when I really had to understand that it's up to us to create more of that collective engagement yeah. again and not having to rely on these systems again because they are still rooted within the same division, yeah. right? And so it's really up to us to just reclaim our powers. And 100%. That's it. Yeah, because the craziest part in that book, I remember they were saying that after they have, uh, there was obviously raping mm-hmm. that was going on there mm-hmm. and then they, they create the, the entire one drop. I feel like a lot of people kind of know what it actually means to... Um, at, at that time to yeah. be mixed yeah. um so again i guess another episode we'll get to diving a bit more what is it uh you know until to have a one drop yeah. <laughs> um the definition of one drop um which will be a very interesting conversation yeah. because right now we we see so much people so many people that just want to have a mixed baby yeah. um just to kind of no like being closer to the white spectrum mm-hmm. than being a black spectrum mm-hmm. but then again those are all things that was written like you mentioned mm-hmm. and we we just do it yeah you know without actually understanding why we're doing it and yeah. i think that's a lot of the thing like in our communities like we do certain things without actually knowing why yeah and so we just end up playing in the system or playing the game that they want us to play 100 it's we need to get our power back, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. That's exactly it. It's so that was everything for our first episode, everybody. Yay. We're hoping that you enjoyed this conversation. Our idea for this first intro was really to just talk about what it is to be black and the diversity that comes with it. Yeah. And to just really touch on the different aspects that blackness encompasses. Mm-hmm. And um, what's my thought? <laughs> I think I don't honestly I think you said it like yeah. I mean if you enjoyed this conversation um and if any of uh, those yeah if there's any topic that you would want us to kind of uh, do a bit more research or to dive in a bit further please let us know but um the goal of this platform will always be to have conversation have conversation that uh, that been affecting our community mm-hmm. but especially our mental health mm-hmm. um so yeah and i just want to say one last thing like as much as you know this is a platform where we're talking like we're no experts like w- although you know we have <laughs> we might have titles but we're also learning as we go 100%. so whatever is said within our podcast please take what resonates with you and don't take it as like the end all be all go and make sense of what it is that you heard go do your research yes. and come share it with us for whatever you found because we're here to learn as well so. exactly yeah and we'll definitely add the link of the book that we're we were referring yeah. um it is a good book to read um it is very um informative it's very informative but as well triggering as well mm-hmm. because after you read this book i feel like you can you just reevaluate everything yeah. that you've been you how you worked yeah how you've been maneuvering yeah i, I totally agree yeah. um so yeah um thank you again for being here with us we were nervous at first I, at least for me <laughs> i was shaking okay i was shaking we, got, we did good we did good um but um i feel like with time we gotta get like excellente 
Excelente. Is that a word? It is, is that not Spanish? It's Spanish. Hola, como esta? Okay, that's <laughs> <laughs> this is when we know we need to wrap it up. Okay, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. Um, for me, it's Instagram Consciously Black. Or underscore. Ooh. Follow me <laughs> on Instagram at underscore consciously black and follow me the thoughtful therapist underscore on instagram as well there might not be much content there but it's coming <laughs> guys we're working on things okay baby steps baby steps <laughs> okay thank you thank you <laughs>